So before the real-time web kind of came along, or the, the conversation around the real-time web came along, a lot of people talked about this idea of the semantic web. Mm -hmm. The Web 3.0 was more about you know tailoring your web experience to you. And it seems like the real-time web kind of steamrolled that conversation for the, for the time being, for the short term anyway. Are there any trends that you see out there that we're not really paying attention to because everyone is so excited about the, the real-time web? Or is, is this really where the focus is and where we're headed for right now? Well, I think some things are happening, but we don't know what's going to end up happening with those, right? I think you mentioned semantic web, and you know, I don't talk about Web 3.0 or Web 2010 or whatever somebody's calling it these days. The fact is we're all using the web as it exists today. We might be using some tools that are less visible. We might be using things that we've been using for five years and keep doing that. What we are seeing is a unification of social data. So you see these movements from people like Facebook, getting Facebook Connect and Google having Friend Connect. And with Facebook Connect, the ideal situation would be that I have one single sign-on that works on just about every website out there. And I would love it if companies would start to pull in my data that I've taken time to put into Facebook and know what to show me somewhere else. For instance, if I'm on ESPN.com, I don't want to see any ads for singles, right? I'm married. It was quick. I just put a checkbox into Facebook, said I was married. So that's it. Done, right? I don't want to have to be recruited for any of these single dating ads, right? Unless I have a personal problem and I've checked that box. Right, exactly. So I want people to start leveraging the social data that I put in somewhere else and making it affect my activity and what I view everywhere else. The real-time web seems very much focused on text updates, you know, this idea of the status sphere and that type of thing. How do you think the idea of images, video, and different types of content kind of play into, into where we're going in this evolution? Well, I think that images and video aren't going away, right? You look at the status sphere, and yes, it has a lot of buzz right now because Twitter is just taking off with some of the celebrities that are on there, and, and it's very easy, right? The, one of the things that's real beneficial about Twitter is it is only... 140 characters. It limits exactly what it can do, and those limitations define the service. Something like video, it takes more effort. It takes more effort to produce, it takes more effort to download, and it takes more effort to consume. But it is a richer experience. That's why they call it rich media. So you take a look at uh, something like the Iran election. You know, the things that really got sent around and virally are images and video. You know, text goes out on the statusphere and it's done. I mean, we're not going to poke at Twitter too much, but their search is broken. And so you can't even search and find those updates that happened a week ago or two weeks ago or a month ago. But the videos that went up on YouTube and the images that went out on Flickr are there to stay. And so you're always going to have a richer experience that gives more detail around the subject matter that you're looking for through a video. You might have fewer total people who saw it, but it's the right people who saw it. Right. And you know, one of the interesting things that we've seen is uh, obviously Apple just came out with the 3GS phone and it has the ability to do video and then upload to YouTube right away. And there's been reports that the amount of content uploaded to YouTube since the phone just came out have increased somewhere in the neighborhood of 400%. Absolutely. And they quadrupled from what I could tell from uh, the amount of mobile video uploads that was happening. And what Apple has really tried to do is push the envelope. And I don't want to tell them the entire company's an early adopter. What they're doing is saying, look, you know, we're going to start setting a new standard. You know, they pushed the iPhone 3G when really AT&T clearly wasn't ready. And AT&T has had to work to try and catch up. You go back uh, several years ago, they were pushing USB on the first iMac in 1998 when nobody really knew what USB was. They were getting rid of the floppy disk, and it was clear that's what needed to happen. They're trying to push people toward the next standards. And other companies tend to be less full of innovation and more reticent to make those kinds of moves. And so what Apple is doing now is making it simpler than ever for people to post video from their mobile handsets. And so that's going to force YouTube to make changes. You know, they didn't expect that, therefore they're going to have to make some modifications in infrastructure. And you're going to start to see the other handheld vendors do the same thing and start following Apple. So that's uh, not a big surprise that they've done that. 